All right, if you're one of those people who is struggling with trying to get your abduction shoulder range better, and you've had an injury like frozen shoulder or a bursitis or even a tendinopathy, and you're missing some of this range here or it gets blocked in this range here. And sometimes you can pick that because you come up and you can't get pure 90 degrees abduction. You're sort of hitching your shoulder to try and get there. Now, really common once you've had something like frozen shoulder or bursitis to actually have that a loss of range. So even though the problem goes away, you're sort of stuck there because the capsule's tightened up or you've had this learned behavior that at that point there you hit your shoulder. Sometimes you just need a bit of shoulder mobilization. Now in the clinic, we get in there and get our hands and stretch the shoulder out to get some more range. So at home, what you can do is try to replicate what we do in the clinic. Now this one's hard to set up and it's difficult to do, but it is effective. And if you need that last little bit of range from say sort of 60 to 90 degrees that you're missing to help you with things overhead, then give this one a shot and see if you can get that last little bit at home in between seeing the physio. What you'll need is two things, pretty specific, a big thick power band and a thin TheraBand. They've got two separate jobs, I'll show you what I mean. Basically what we need to do is we need to get this abduction with a glide downwards, which is quarterly, of the humerus in the shoulder joint. Because what we're trying to do when that, when you when you raise into abduction like that, so this is your shoulder, when you go into there, what we don't want is the ball elevating and hitting the roof. Now, if you've got a bursitis in there, or you've got a tendon off in there, maybe the joint's really tight, and you get to that point there, and it jams, call it impingement, call it what you like, that's where you lose the range. So what we're trying to do is do a downward glide in the humerus at the point here, so off the ball, downwards, so we can get more range. If that makes sense. So if you imagine when this is coming up, you're getting some sort of block in there or jamming in there, we need a downward phase there. So that's where the power band's gonna come in. And it needs to be not on the top of the shoulder, okay? Or what you think is the top of the shoulder, not in the acroma, it actually needs to be on the arm. Now, that means if you look at this position here, that's where I want it. Okay, it doesn't have to be way down here, and if anything's going to slip off there anyway. We're always really close to the joint, so the, the caudal glide pressure needs to be as close to the joint as you can. Okay, it just can't be on the joint. All right, so it's got to be off or on the joint. It needs to be, can't be on the acromion, it needs to be off that. Now, what you'll discover is you'll get a bit of slippage with this, which is the only problem, but you're doing, you're going to have to do the best you can. This one is going to help elevate your arm into abduction. Because if you do an active movement there, you're gonna fire your deltoid, which may be creating more jamming or catching through the joint. So we wanna not have to use our deltoid to lift. So we're just going for mobility, we're not going for strengthening. So this is where the green one comes in. So you have to put that over something high, okay? Pretty high. So it could be a door at home, you could sort of shove one through and lock the door. I'm using a double green. So this needs to be relative to your strength because you've got to be able to pull it down by your side. So there's no point having that really strong if you can't do anything with it, okay? If it's too light, it won't lift you up enough, all right? Because when you get to there, we only said you need to get to 90 degrees, there needs to be some tension on that. So work that one out of how high you are, whether you go double or single on this. So at that point there, you've got some, it's your tension, you're, you're struggling to not let it pull you up, okay? You've got to hold it down. So this is the passive abduction. So I'm using muscles I need, I'm not using the delt. See the delt's off, soft, okay? So I know that when I raise this up, I'm not using my deltoid and jamming the joint, okay? If I've got a problem going on there. So that's that one. This one has to go on the arm. Now the setup is a little bit tricky. Put that on first, put your hand through this one, Okay, and then you've got to get this on your foot here and get it on the ground. Okay, so there's my downward pressure, if that makes sense. We talked about caudal glide. That's like my hands in the, in the clinic pushing downwards. If I'm lying on a bed, it's my hands pushing that way, okay, to try and get some translation downwards to clear some impingement, okay. And then this hand here is worrying about fighting the band, pulling me upwards, okay. 
So what you'll find is the only thing is when you come down, it wants to slip off, okay? So your job is to try and get it just off their chromium. You can feel where that chromium is, so you can feel right with the edge of the bone, so go right to that jawline. This one then holds a bit of tension on as well. You can actually hold it in, pull it down a bit, so when I come down, you see it's not gonna slip off, okay? I don't need to come down too far, so I just wanna go down to the point where I'm sort of pain free, and then your job here is to try and slowly edge that up. Keep the tension on this hand, let that go to the point, now I don't want you to jam your shoulder and make it worse, but go what you can tolerate, and then release off again. Okay, there's your rest period. Go again, slowly, 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 lifting it or letting it rise into abduction. You may not get to 90 for a while, but you're aiming to try and get that little bit of movement that you're missing from say 60 or 70 degrees up to 90, slowly better, by letting that hand go upwards, as in letting the band pull it upwards, okay? And then having a glide downward pressure here to try and clear whatever is jamming that joint, whether it's a tight capsule, whether it's the bursa, it's a tendinopathy, whatever's going on in there, maybe some joint effusion to help you with that movement. So it's replicating what I'm doing in the clinic for these people. Because if you can do that stuff at home, you're gonna get some benefits at home as well. And that'll hopefully get, once you've done that for a, you know, a few sets, and we're talking about sort of maybe three, maybe four sets of a good 10 or 12 reps of that, you'll probably find you've got a little bit more freedom of movement here in that range where you were stuck before. Now it's gonna take you quite a while because the body has to adapt and change and whatever's going on there has to get better anyway. But what you're trying to aim for is to reduce the stiffness around that joint so your mechanics are better from that 60 to 90 degrees. Once you've got that, you'll find overhead stuff and getting up there is gonna be a lot easier or you can actually get to that point. Because if you've lost this point here, you're gonna struggle with the stuff here. Give that a shot at home. See you next time.